But you'd have to ask the folks right over there in the building across the river there why they don't stand up to the EPA and protect their citizens, each one of their citizens, instead of making up these false, I don't know, these false problems, basically. And why don't they stand up for us? Because they get federal dollars, pass-through dollars. So what? That's my favorite. My favorite. Free money. That's my favorite. Free money. Where do they get that money besides when they're just printing it out of thin air? Uh Um, taxes. Well, and but they're not our taxes. I don't care if they take it from Dave. I just don't want them to take from me. Exactly. (laughs) That's the attitude right there. Welcome to America. That's the whole reason why the tax system works because everyone wants you to pay your fair share. Well, I had to pay. You better pay. Yeah. Yeah, So we all slit slit our own throats. Making sure that the other person's throat is slit. At least he didn't have to sit by you. At least, yeah. All right, four five eight talk is the number. If you'd like to call in and get on the program this morning, I, you know, if if enough people get together and decide to outlaw a particular behavior, if in this particular case, that if we do say, if the majority of the people in the borough say, yeah, let's go ahead and and restrict what can be burned, what what stoves, what, what, what people can actually have in their homes to heat their homes with. Uh, doesn't that really open it up to restrict absolutely anything at any time? Or, I mean, I guess to a certain degree we already have that happening in America, but uh, isn't that what happened in Nazi Germany? Where it just, it's a, it's a, to me it's a very small shift away from we are going to restrict you from burning wood because we don't like wood smoke to we're going to restrict you from doing business because you don't have the right license to, we're going to restrict you from doing business because a Jew can't get a license. Yeah, well, that's every aspect of your life. Try driving home. Try flying somewhere. Try going on a boat. Ask Jim Wilde about going on a boat. Try doing anything that involves you moving from A to B. Ask the DOT care. that sets up their station and hammers every single person that comes through there. Yeah. Every aspect of your traveling has been regulated unbelievably. I don't care if they ban wood stoves or not. I'm still going to use mine. So then you're going to end up going to jail. Maybe. Maybe. Um, all the the laws depend on uh, the consent of your neighbors, basically. Like, the only thing that makes the state legitimate is the fact that the majority of people perceive it to be legitimate. It's not, it's not their laws or the gun behind the law or anything like that. It's the perception of the people in the community. So eventually, if things get absurd enough and people stop uh, treating it as legitimate, it will cease to be legitimate. That's the that's the ultimate solution. Dave, do you think that's why um, when we have a Republican, Republican in and things are being taken from us, Republicans are all complacent? Yeah, that has to do with it, sure. It's both sides. Democrats are the same way. Well, when their guy's doing it, then they say, well, it's, it's got to be okay because I they, voted for the guy. Yeah, they think they share an ego boundary with the guy. They think the guy actually represents them, which is the farce of representative government. So they sit there and kowtow for two, four, six years, whatever, and go, yeah, I agree with everything he does. And then when somebody else does, starts doing the same things that that guy does, then it's like, oh, you know, the sky is falling. Need right. to need to get it, somebody else to represent me with a different label. Is that why you think that's probably why World War II, Korea, and Vietnam were all had uh, liberal presidents? <laughs> I'm just asking. Yeah, I don't know. You're the smart guy. <laughs> Four five eight talk is the number. Go back to the phones. Good morning, caller. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hello. Hello. Who is this? Hey, this is Al. Al, what's on your mind? Hey, I'm not the smartest guy in the world or anything, and I don't ever claim to be. But isn't this sort of what we live in now? Our government, society, what we fled from, you know, uh, hundreds of years ago from Britain of uh, the oppression, uh, the the the, the Religious oppression, the laws, the, 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 you know, it just seems like we've ran ourselves right back into what we ran from hundreds of years ago. Well, we ran out of West. We can't go West anymore. Correct. You used to be able to go West and get away from the, uh, the United States and get into the territories. Correct. And we've gone North. We, have, now, we need to grow gills so we can just move into the ocean. <laughs> But, I mean, seriously, though, yeah. I, just, I don't understand the mindset of people that, you know, oh, you can't put a flagpole up in your yard because the housing authority says you can't. Or, um, you know, God forbid you use a, 
uh, weed whacker and trim your hedges the wrong way. It's against the housing policy. Of, uh, it just seems like we live in a, I don't know, I'm, I'm just not, I, I just don't get it. I, I don't understand why people want to live this way and why people are just so willing to put their head in the sand and just say, oh, it is what it is. Well, you understand? Sorry. I was just going to say, if you look at it, uh, we're way more oppressed now than we ever were under the British Empire. I Correct. Mean, people were actually quite free, the colonists were, very free to do what they wanted. And you know what? They were pretty civilized. I would say they were way more civilized than we are in our vast civilization, that we, in our enlightened civilization that we have now. And I'd have to say something about what you said you know, trimming your hedges and stuff. If you voluntarily move into a neighborhood that has its own restrictions in it and you volunteer to be in that neighborhood and it's private, a private neighborhood, then you should have to follow those restrictions. But where I put down the difference is the government's telling you you can't, you have to whack your weeds a certain way or the government says you can't put up the flagpole. Then I have an issue with it. Well, that's, a, yeah, I understand. I just meant in general, though, our, the law factor of everything is a law. You can't walk across the street unless, you know, uh, you walk a certain way in a certain light. I mean, I understand some of it's for safety, uh, but on the other hand, some of it's common sense. And, you know, but we have to be told what to do. Like, you know, you grow up and move out of your parents' house, and then all of a sudden you're right back with your parents again because the government tells you everything you can do. And then they tell you ignorance is no excuse for the law. And you had no clue, so I'm supposed to read up on law also? I don't know. Right, the founders said that um, the big thing that they were trying to pull away from from Britain law was statute and code law. Right. That's the problem with statutes and regulations and code is that you cannot know. In fact, well, there's said, only there's only a few hundred pages added to the Federal Register every day, Josh. Oh. Sounds like you're pretty lazy not reading all that. Yeah, I should be more like you and read them all. <laughs> you guys are killing me. Federalist 62 addresses that very issue right there. In the, in the Federalist Papers, Federalist 62 addresses that very issue that when the laws become so voluminous that people cannot read them, that, I mean, and look at, I mean, even during the during some of the recent debates, our own lawmakers are saying, oh, who has time to read these things? And well, yeah, you have to pass the bill before you can find exactly, out what is Exactly. They're, they're passing laws before they even know what's in them. And it, it, it is one of the problems of an oppressive government when we have laws that we are too big to be read. And Ron Paul tried to put a measure forward that was going to require everyone to know and understand a law before they passed it. And it was defeated, oh, yeah, because they didn't want to read the law to see what he was wanting them to vote on. <laughs> well, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate you guys taking my call right. and answering a lot of my questions. It just, it's just frustrating, you know. As we'll just look how far we've come in thirty years. <laughs> yeah, or how far we've regressed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the call. Four five eight talk is a number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? You still there? This is Lee. Hey, Lee. What's on your mind today? Hey. Uh, your tongue and the, your person there with you is tongue and cheek comment about we need to grow gills because we ran out of the west <laughs> to migrate into. That that you know it's a tongue and cheek for sure, but it might be a little short short sighted because if you look at the pollution that's happening to the oceans, the, by the time we grew gills, I think it would be the wrong move. Well, if we grew them in the presence of pollution, there'd be no sweat, right? They'd be adapted for that environment. <laughs> I don't know how you I don't know how you go there because. You develop them on the land, but it's a it's yeah, a, it's, it's a, a big mute, leap. It's a mute point, but I, I just say you know you're 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 so right about the we have no more west. But I have to say, a couple of years ago, my wife and I went to uh, the Queen Charlotte Islands, which is essentially southwest of Ketchikan, but it's in another country, and I was impressed with the the, the lack of oversight and the lack of government that those people enjoyed by living out there, you know, sort of, well, literally detached as a la any kind of a land bridge from their their head government in Canada. And they they, uh, they touted their, their freedoms from any supervision uh, from, from a hierarchy that uh, doesn't give a damn about them. And so in uh, that anarchist state that they were in, they're probably all killing each other, huh? No, not likely. No, it was very refreshing, I have to say. But uh, yeah. good to hear you guys talk. It's an, it's an interesting uh, back and forth. 
Thank you very much for the yeah, phone that's, call. You know, that's, you a good, that's a good point. Um, as the screws get turned, you know, people will start to leave. Uh, when, when they realize the grass may be greener somewhere else, they're going to start venturing out and, and taking their money and their talents elsewhere. It's already right. happening. It is already happening. In New York City, people are, are not just leaving the city. In some cases, they're going out of business. They're just saying, you know what, I'm not going to do this anymore. Uh, it, it's very much, if anybody out there has read uh, Ayn Rand, it's very much like Atlas Shrugged. Yeah, is they're going to Galt's Gulch. Exactly. I mean, it, 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 there's not literally a Galt's Gulch yet, but there are. I mean, I think there there could be one. I think the last. Actually, yeah, there is a, a community in Argentina that's been set up um, by Doug Casey, and he's kind of doing that. He's got expatriates from all over Western Europe and the United States moving down there. I might just consider a move myself. <laughs> It'd be worth checking out just to see, you know, what's going on out there and the way other people are thinking. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hey, how's it going? Hey, it's going well. Who is this? This is Mike. Mike, what's on your mind? I know we're not supposed to talk about R's and D's, but I had this horrible thought the other day that it looks like the R's are going to be in complete control of everything here in the next year and a half, and guy like Mitt Romney as president or Rick Perry, Boehner, you know. I mean, if people think things are bad now with this, with uh, Obama in there, it's going to get a lot worse with the R's in there. And I'm an R's to say that. No, we. I think all of us here agree with that. I mean, because the people go along, like we said a little bit ago, the, that the Republican people go along with whatever the Republican establishment tells them that is good. That's how we got the Patriot Act. That's why we have the TSA. I mean, we've gone over this a lot. I'm sure you've heard all the different agencies and different enact- acts that have been enacted and that are brought on by Republicans and how they horrible from, yeah. they are. And how they all they, come from the R's. Yeah. The R's do it. And nobody, I mean, the R's are too stupid to even know that they're doing it, you know, as far as their rank and file. Well, that's why I, was, I kind of wanted to challenge someone to actually come up with something. I mean, Randy knows Republicans pretty well. Maybe he can bring it up. But name one thing since 2000, because that's when the last time that they had every house in Congress and the president, presidential palace, when what law or what one thing did they do to protect individual liberty? Or, or you could even go beyond that and say uh, name the things that that under the first Bush term happened to destroy individual liberty versus those under the Obama administration. The list would be much, much, much longer for the Bush administration. The only thing people complain about Obama is his socialized health care, which the Republicans had a similar proposal on the table ready to rock anyway. Mitt yeah, Romney. So. It's, it mirrors Mitt Romney's uh, Massachusetts law. Yep. So the future is a little bleak uh, no matter what happens. That's why we just like to, like we were saying, you can't go any further west. Or I'd like to just take care of this little tiny community right here and get people to wake up. Exactly. And where we can, if it does get worse and they fail, they falter, the federal government goes under, the money disappears, hopefully, then we can just still live our lives like a normal society. Yeah, that's about what we have to look forward to right there. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not something that's actually that bad. If you could, if we could just respect each other's liberties and rights and just let the market move along and we didn't have to have people telling us how we should live every second of our life, I think most of us would be just fine. Yep. Bye, guys. Keep it up. Thank you.